Before we put our cam followers in there, I like to bleed down all the lash adjusters. Uh, even if they're brand new, I still bleed them down uh, before I put them in there. Uh, it's a pretty simple process, kind of time consuming. It's not too bad on the two valve because there's only 16 of them, but when you're doing a four valve, there's quite a bit of these to bleed down. It takes a couple minutes per uh, lash adjuster to get them bled down. These are interchangeable, so when you take them out, uh, you don't have to keep them in order or mark them or anything like that. The way I do this on the, in a vise, you need a bench vise, and uh, there's a little hole in here. That's where the oil goes in and pressurizes this thing. And I like to put that up so I can kind of see how much oil is coming out of there and then uh, put it directly in the center of the vise. Now when you, when you start turning the handle, I just put pressure on it. Uh, I'm not trying to force it to go faster. Uh, I'm not I'm not putting a whole lot of pressure on here. Maybe five pounds, five foot pounds of pressure somewhere in there. But you just keep that constant pressure on there and it'll slowly rotate around. It's kind of like a shock absorber. It's going to resist. Um, it's going to resist collapsing down. So you don't want to force it down. You don't want to do it too fast. And this is where the time consuming process comes in. As you can see, it goes very slowly. You keep that tension on there and it'll go around and once you start doing uh once you start doing them you'll get an idea uh the tricky part is kind of seeing where it, it stops so you can see some oil coming out the tricky part is to see where it stops where the handle uh where where this is finally at its bottom part if you go too far you could actually damage the lifter uh, if you go too fast you can damage the lifter um, so what I've noticed is that you do so many of these things, you start to remember where the handle is when it, when it stops. And so you have like a, a, a one and a half rotation. So uh, whatever the first one stops, the, the, all the other ones are going to stop in pretty much the same location. And this one should be getting pretty close. You don't change the pressure though throughout this entire process. You don't change the pressure on how much you're you're uh, uh, tightening the vise down. There, it, so right there it made a distinct stop. Uh, now uh, the oil stopped coming out of there and I'm not putting any more pressure on there, but it's not, it's not moving. So now uh, that lifter is, is bled out. We can release it down. So we did, uh, there's one rotation. So a little bit more than a full rotation around. Now we'll wipe this down. When you inspect these two, you just check for any uh, any wear that's on there. Uh, like if, if anything's loose on it, excessive wear on the top of it, or anything like that. Now you can see that it plunges down a little bit. And I have a cut container of oil uh, that uh, I'll stack these in there once they're done being bled down. Let them soak overnight. About 45 minutes later, I'm on my last one here and I wanted to get a good shot to see how far in the plunger actually goes. So this is compressed all the way in. These are aftermarket lash adjusters, but uh, the factory ones are pretty similar on how far they go in there. Uh, so just take your time, be patient. Like I said, it took me about 45 minutes to do all of these and I have them uh, stacked in there. So we'll let those soak in oil overnight. I use Redline Full Synthetic 5W20. Uh, that's what I, I like to use, but uh, any synthetic oils uh, would be good. Royal Purple, something like that. Just Full Synthetic 5W20. So I'll let them soak overnight. Okay, so here's our two valve. This is actually a Texid block, aluminum Texid block with PI heads. Uh, the first thing uh, I'm gonna do is I always keep them, once I put them all together, I keep them at top dead center so that all the dots are and the, the dots and the dark links are lined up. So now that it's in this condition, uh, go ahead and install as many of the lash adjusters as we can. And the reason why I say that is because some of the cam lobes are in the way and we'll have to turn the engine to get them out of the way. Here's our tub of lash adjusters. 
It was soaking overnight. And so uh, you might be asking, well, why, why, do, why do that? Why do you collapse them down? The main reason I collapse them down is because it makes it easier to put the followers in there. But I've also heard people say that they didn't collapse them down and they said they had piston to valve contact. Uh, so it's possible that that could hold a valve open. Um, but the main reason that I do it is it makes it a lot less frustrating to put the uh, cam followers in. Okay, that's all I can get on this side. Now we'll put them on this side. Now a crank turning tool, if you don't have a crank turning tool, uh, you can put a large adjustable on there and, and uh, uh, tighten it down until it hits that and you'll be able to move it around. But I'm gonna put, I'm gonna do a, a full rotation counterclockwise on the engine. And now the rest should go in over here. And the last one's on this side. Yeah, so here's our lash adjusters. Uh, you want to clean these out real good, just wipe them down. Uh, you can blow them out if you need to, if they're really dirty. Uh, maybe do it in solvent, clean it in solvent or whatever. Um, but these are interchangeable as well. Uh, they don't have to be marked for intake and exhaust or even what cylinder they are. So uh, this is what we're going to be putting in. And these are the two tools, uh, valve spring compressor tools. This is a four valve one that this part, uh, this is the part that actually uh, pushes down on the valve uh, retainer. And this goes underneath the cam as leverage and as you pull down on it, the leverage of the cam pushes down on it. Uh, and this switches sides, so you can go either side on this thing. This, I've, I've also used this one on two valves, but this is the two valve one and it, it does not switch. So this uh, part right here that pushes down on the uh, retainer, it does not move around. So you, you limit it on, I don't remember what brand these are. I've had them for a while, but uh, I'm gonna try and do it with the two valve one. If you have a four valve one, the principle is still the same. Okay, I'm gonna try and get a close up on doing the first one so that you can kind of see how I do it. Cause there is a lot of technique to doing this. Uh, at least I feel like there is. Um, what I do is I put the the square part down on the valve and then the tip is going to be just below the tip of the lash adjuster. So slide it onto You see that I got it on the um, valve But it's not up on the tip of this thing so when I press down on the valve spring, I'm gonna push up on the uh, lash adjuster, or I'm sorry, on the cam follower at the same time, it'll just pop right on here. Some of them, you may be able to just push on, it might, uh, they might just be able to pop right on there. Okay, I got 3 8 breaker bar. There, it's hooked up underneath the cam, and this is on top of the uh, valve spring. So as I pry it back, I'm going to push up on the follower. And there it pops right on. So now you can see the the follower is on top of the lash adjuster. And it stayed on top of the valve. So we'll do that 16 more times or 15 more times and that'll be it. Okay, so uh, the engine has been rotated once counterclockwise. So I'm gonna go through and put any of them in that I can. And any by that, I mean any of the cam lobes that are out of the way enough uh, to push them in. So I'll do this side, then I'll do the other side, and then rotate the engine uh, back to top dead center, and then put the remainder in. Now we'll move over to this side.
Okay, I wasn't able to get too many on this side, but now we'll go ahead and r rotate the engine forward, uh, get the rest of this side and the other side. Okay, so we'll rotate in full rotation. It's also a good idea to leave the key, uh, the Woodruff key on the crankshaft, straight up and down, uh, either straight up and down, straight left, straight right, or straight down. When it's at either of those four positions, all the pistons will be down. That way, in case you start getting aggravated uh, and you're prying down real hard, you don't want to hit pry down a valve into the piston. And now we'll see if we can get all the rest of them in over here. Now we've got all of them in on this side. And there's only a couple left over here. And that's it for this side. Now from this point, all we gotta do is put the covers on it uh, and it'll be ready to install. So we're not gonna turn the engine over anymore. Uh, you can double check all your dots, make sure your dots and your black keys are where they're supposed to be. Don't forget your reluctor wheel on the front. Your engine won't run with that. And then I like to put some tape across the top for the intake. And the reason I don't leave tape on there when I'm turning the engine around is because this will, as you turn it around, it will actually suck it down in there. So that's it.